Hello! Welcome to another episode of Mega Manga Monday. I am Jason Ahn, and today we are talking about Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, all the way up to chapter 201. It's been a little while since Mega Manga Mondays has talked Jujutsu Kaisen, and we were just kind of waiting for uh, more substantial stuff to talk about. Um, and, uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, I am Jason Hahn. I'm a writer for ScreenRant.com. Uh, I happen to write a lot of video game-related stuff, but I'm a huge manga fan, uh, so we decided to start Mega Manga Mondays to talk about the new chapters of series we love. And, uh, yeah, we, we have a good amount to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen, and uh, I got some buddies from Screen Rant to uh, join me. Uh, ben, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good. I'm Ben. I write for the comics and the anime section uh, of Screen Rant, and... JJK has always been one of my favorite series uh, in Jump, just because it's always so fun to see what uh, Gay Gay will come up with next. And uh, the latest chapters have not been disappointing in that regard, so I'm excited to talk about them. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, we've done previous podcasts on JJK, uh, definitely during the Culling game. Uh, there were some fights we loved and some that kind of uh, made us be like, do we still want to do a podcast <laughs> for JJK? Ben always, ben always liked them. So hey, yeah, speak for yeah. yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, just for my personal things. But uh, we also got uh, Steven, man. How are you, man? Good. Yeah, uh, my name's Steven. Um, I write for the uh, comics, manga, and interview section for uh, Screen Man. Doing more... Um, interviews these days which is a lot of fun but yeah it's uh it's been a while since we talked about jjk and a lot has been going down recently in the last few chapters especially um so a lot to talk about uh yeah uh last we left off one of the possibly <laughs> one of the final big uh battles of the culling game uh was kind of going in place uh, it was maki versus nayoya um <laughs> they had kind of a family squabble going on and uh previously when she awakened her new powers uh she pretty much just tore through the entire evil family um but because she doesn't have cursed energy uh she wasn't able to like finish off the finish off naoya so he turned into a giant hulking dis disgusting uh cursed spirit and uh we got this like he is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Something yeah, about Ikea. Becoming... I thought he, he turned into like the, the worm that he is. Oh, yeah. I thought you said something about Ikea. Um, and, uh, well, yeah. Well, don't you remember the part of the fight where they went to, the, to Ikea afterwards? Just to, just to spruce up their apartments. Uh... And she made, a shelf, <laughs> she made a shelf out of him. It was pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> Uh, but I ended up really enjoying that fight, definitely more than the last couple fights we've gotten in this arc. Um, I mean, just just getting to see Maki, of course, is great. Um, even before her transformation, it was just really cool getting to see like a character who doesn't have uh, cursed energy or any of these things contend against these monstrous things and still managed to do pretty well uh, until she didn't. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, But this new version of her she's even awakened uh throughout the course of the fight she's even awakened new forms of this ability and we got introduced to two new sorcerers one guy who's just a f obsessed with sumo and then uh, another older guy who seems to be just a a, a natural with the blade uh, like uh, some sort of sword master that also didn't have cursed energy but apparently he was just so gifted in the energies of the universe and stuff uh with his swordsman skills that he was able to sort of read the energies of stuff and uh for my interpretation maki kind of learned from that to um level up herself to the point where she's basically like bouncing off of sound waves am, am i am i correct there or something like that i think she was she was bouncing off of like planes of air like not necessarily sound waves but just like pre like pressure differentials in the atmosphere. Okay, uh, so not quite like One Piece air walking, but uh, but but something kind of similar. Which I yeah that, that that's that's kind of. Well, cool. We can say even though it might not be like One Piece's air walking, it, she is basically like Asta now um, from Black Clover. I thought that was kind of fun. I actually did a article about that. Um, a little uh, while ago because like big giga because basically she has like the capability of 
um, avoiding or breaking through cursed energy because she doesn't possess any herself, which yeah. is basically what Asta does with his anti magic. Um, yeah, that's something that I really enjoyed because, as you all know, I'm a big Black Clover fan. So I'm like, oh, look, there's some Black Clover here. <laughs> hey, that's kind of <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah, that's a great uh, observation because that's definitely how the fight ended. Um, they ended up getting the better of Nyoya, and then he did the, the dreaded domain expansion. And uh, the two new characters we've uh, barely gotten to know, uh, we, we kind of got to see how that power worked. Um and uh, now that I'm thinking about it, it's almost it's it's a lot like uh, uh, what my hero is doing right now. Um, there's like somebody who has a newer power that's able to slow things down or adjust their speed, uh, mm. even to the cellular level. Um, and from the way I read it, that's kind of how Naoya's uh, domain expansion works: is he's able to pretty much make parts of people stop uh, to the point of even their muscles. So if they try to move the rest of their body while that muscle stopped and that stays in place and they just end up like ripping themselves apart but yeah. as we learned in this uh in that fight uh somebody who doesn't have any cursed energy can't be affected by that domain expansion or is it any domain expansion well, it's, it's any because because yeah because because usually um you know once the domain expansion has been created you can you can't enter it from the outside and because she has no um cursed energy the domain expansion looks looks at her as like uh like a building and cuz you know buildings can you know just enter the you know if they're thrown into it or whatever mm -hmm. um so at least that was gege's um explanation as why she could go in but it's it, it is because that she possesses no cursed energy like that so which I think yeah. is so interesting. Like we're this far into the series and we're still learning like some of the intricacies of domain expansion. And that's, a, that, that's actually one of my favorite things about Jujutsu Kaisen are those domain expansions. Like oh, I've just always been, I've like, like even more than the characters. I, I think that the domain expansion, just the intricacies of it, or, or just, just the ideas of you know how it works. That's what really attracted me to, JJK. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm always excited when there's more to learn about it. I mean, even just a few chapters ago, during some of those battles we didn't like, there was the whole thing of, you know, when there's three domain expansions. Oh, that's too much, but it can work if there's no other people in the area. Like we're still learning things. Yeah. Um, this late in the game, which is always great, since that's one of the. It's, at least for uh, me, one of the top things for JJK. Yeah, I know that's a reason a lot of people were really into Bleach, too, is like the, how the Bankais work, and those got so varied and so out there that it became really interesting to see that. Um, and, and apparently I, it's the sexiest word um, in anime, people are saying. Bankai? Bankai? Bankai. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so satisfying. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I'm partial to uh, uh, Rasengan, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's kind of... Kame Kameha? That's, that's never heard of know. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is from a bit of an obscure series, so I don't blame you. But... Yeah, I, I, I don't think anybody really. Uh, yeah, no, no one's ever heard yeah. of that one before. But it, uh... it's from like the eighties or nineties. So, well, actually, J Jason, you you probably know this better than anyone because apparently there was in one of like these games there was a new patch or something that was added where you could do um, kamehamehas. And there were a lot of YouTubers who were completely mispronouncing it. <laughs> they're like, Kami, Kami, who? Or I, I, I don't know how they were mispronouncing it. Kami, Kami, who? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, that tickles my funny bone. It was probably Fortnite. Uh, yeah, For yes. Fortnite recently did a yes. big, really cool that thing it. that I happened to be busy that week, so I didn't get to check it out myself. But, um, yeah, back to JJK. Uh, that's one right. thing about the domain expansions that... It's uh, a lot of the newer mangas, uh, manga, because uh, a lot of things feel uh, kind of like they're not necessarily taking it from a lot of the series that we like grew up watching, but mm -hmm. they're taking the things that like worked for that series and improving upon them. Um, Black Clover, right. I think, does that really well with a lot of things. Um, JJK, I think, has taken the whole idea of Ban Bankai and like. Uh, evolved it and made it more complex and more interesting. 
Um, and it's honestly kind of weird, a little insight to the behind the scenes kind of things. I was looking at like analytics and stats and I did like one tweet for JJK where I hashtag domain expansion and it was like four times more exposure than any of the previous <laughs> JJK like tweets I put out. So people love domain expansions and uh, getting to see Nioya's was really, really cool um, as short of a time as we spent in it but the whole idea that maki can just like walk in and out of a domain expansion like it's it's just made her even more terrifying especially as we're like approaching what could be the final like arcs of jjk it just feels like everything is coming to some sort of you know peak and hype and all that stuff um i'm starting to get it I'm starting to feel it more now than I have throughout any of the culling game. Um, I think one problem we had throughout the culling game is just like, we feel like it could just keep on going forever without it like tying back to the main story. And this is actually another issue that I think bleach had too. Um, I'm a big fan of a YouTuber, totally not Mark who recently reviewed the Anarchar arc of bleach, which just has way too many fights, way too many characters that, like you could remove that fight and the whole story is still the same. Like, wait, 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 wait. Well, wait does so, that arc include the the crazy Ichigo and Grimjaw fight? Is that? Yeah, I don't that's, remember. I that's still one remember of the good that ones. Much. Yeah, that's that's that, that's one of that's the one good of my ones. top fights ever. Yeah, like, I I remember it to this day. But watching it on Toonami and like I don't remember that much from Bleach. That's why like I really have to catch up with this new stuff. <laughs> um, but that fight. Ichigo and Grimjaw, one of the greatest fights I've ever seen in anime. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they did a great job of, like, you know, making you care about that and the whole, like, raising to the occasion. And it all, like, correlates to what the story, what is going on with the story. But a little later on in that arc specifically, they introduce, oh. like, these are the top 10 strongest guys. And it just turns into, like, one on one fights. And oh, uh, it's yeah. just very, like, unfocused from the whole overall plot. So it just, it feels oh. like filler, canon filler. Miller, uh is the, one of the words i saw for it and i well I like so that. so here's the difference though in my mind <laughs> no, please, please, please please like i mean the shibuya incident arc knocked down like pretty much all of the had been established before it right mm-hmm. major characters dying left and right oh, the yeah. status quo completely changing all of that so like, Gege had to introduce a lot of new characters and chess pieces to the board uh, to set up for the future arcs. So, the calling game, like, yes, it introduced a lot of characters in one-on-one fights, but a lot of those characters that it introduced will likely be more important later on, mm-hmm. right? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's not just introducing one-off characters to throw away, although some of the characters only did last for their given fights, like right. uh, Reggie Starr, for instance, unless he somehow comes back. Who is like my uh, favorite, ironically. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, I, mean, well, I him originally, but it was when he was dying, and I was like, oh, man, I'm actually feeling for this guy. But, yeah. yeah. Anyway, He's got sorry, keep, keep going, Ben. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But so, like, I think that this is just, it's not just, like, spinning its wheels, although it might seem like that because we don't have the benefit of hindsight. Mm -hmm. I think that it will be a lot better on reread at the end of the series if Gege actually, you know, sticks the landing and actually (laughs) incorporates elements of it going forward. Because I think in, you know, getting away from the monkey fight for a bit, in the latest chapters, I think that this setup has been paying off in spades. um, Mm -hmm. Because we've revisited Yuji and Fushiguro, and they're meeting with, like, the angel, and they've got the comedian guy who's introduced as well. And it's it's getting really very interesting. And it seems to be setting up for the next big stuff. Yeah. yeah. And as long as like all those things happen for a reason and it has a payoff, uh, I've just watched enough anime and enough ma- or read enough mangas to see like that that doesn't always isn't always the case. Sometimes it is just like a filler fight because they had a cool idea that they wanted to throw out there. But, like, if there was something going on in the background where all these sorcerers that came back who had these very special particular powers, uh, if they were being used by, uh, like, the main villain, 
to do some sort of huge plot like Ocean's Eleven style. Like <laughs> the only way my plan could work is if I bring this sorcerer back or something like that. And uh, you're right, Ben. Uh, from the latest couple chapters, especially when we uh, got to catch up with the angel that we've been waiting to to meet for so long, uh, Yuji and Sakuna and um, uh, everybody else that's in that group, it, it all kind of it was refreshing because it was a return to the focused like what what's our goal right now in the series okay we want to rescue gojo and it's just like okay well how are we going to be able to do that well we got to find the angel it's just like okay are we going to be able to find the angel and convince them <laughs> and it's just like all these things that have been up in the air for so long um and i absolutely think it will you know feel better and less drawn out uh when we're not reading it week to week or every two weeks because there's been quite a few breaks with jjk it feels like um uh, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it all to come to a head. But yeah, what well, you got? I, I, I guess with me, m my problem is, is like yeah, knowing that things will pay off in the end is always like a plus. But and, and I'm not saying I, I could do it better. Obviously not. Um, I, I just like it when things like this are written in a way where they can still be enjoyable without having to rely on the fact that it's going to become better later on mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I can't give an example right off the top of my head where this has happened um but I, I guess one of the things that i felt was a little off um or, or that could have been better was when the, those two characters we mentioned the, the the guy who's crazy about sumo and the guy who's crazy with swords like they're their purpose, especially the sumo wrestling guy, was so important that, you know, because, like, he was the reason, the sumo guy was the reason why Maki was able to get this crazy amount of training. Like, he was basically his own hyperbolic time chamber, almost. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, yeah, it's like, I felt that that would have been stronger if... Real quick, just to clarify, for, the other just to clarify for uh, for other listeners who don't might not know what that means, uh, the sumo guy pretty much you get into a sumo match with the guy, and then a bubble forms around you, and time reacts differently in the bubble. Uh, so they mm -hmm. were able to essentially have like a thousand sumo matches within the span of like five seconds um, because mm -hmm. time worked differently in that bubble. So Maki was able to spend a whole lot of time sorting through things in her brain and uh came out a better person but c continue sorry yeah but no like, like I, I just felt like that would have been the perfect time to bring back one of the other characters we had already seen and it would have been great if their power maybe like uh the ufo person i, I forgot her name the the person who could change into the sky and stuff or the air yeah, i think it was Ura if, or Ura. yeah or Ura. i always I, I always thought of her as ufo but with a different letter yeah well, she, um, she literally couldn't show up though because of the rules of the con game right a different but, colony so. right right it's oh, right. just like if one of like if one of those if we were able to use a different character we had already seen play that role because it just felt like it was just like too perfect that there's this random guy who has that power. Like if we had seen if the person who, who did the hyperbolic time chamber was someone we had already met, it would have been that much more powerful, but it was just the fact that there's these two guys who basically have the same personality, but just different for different things. Save the day. Like, I guess like I, I just want, I want things to be paid off now rather than having to wait and rely on or just, like have like comfort in the fact that what we're, is happening right now will have a purpose later. You almost want to be able to like... Go ahead, Ben. Uh, I, I disagree completely because I think the sumo guy, part of what made him so effective is because the whole point of that fight was like, don't think, right? Just enjoy the fight for what it is and like absorb, like be in the moment of the fighting. Uh, and that's sort of what Maki took from that fight to like be free right and that's what gave her the ability to just be absolutely in the moment and see everything that she needed to see when fighting Naoya and right. like I feel like if it was a previous character it would hit less hard than like just this random guy showing up and being like we we all being like you know why is this random guy here what's he doing he seems like he's out of nowhere and he's just serving this important role like 
and him just basically telling us, you know, don't think about it too much either and just be in the moment. I think that is much more powerful coming from a random character who gets us thinking and overanalyzing just like Maki than a pre-established character. Yeah. I guess that's just me. I think that yeah. makes sense. Well, no, just... I mean, that, no that, that, that makes sense. I mean, especially if, if that works. Um, I guess I just want that payoff. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's just, that that's my thing. But no, what you said makes a lot of sense. I, I, I like that. Well, it's yeah, almost... payoff is always good. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. I love a good payoff. But I think that this moment works really well, partially because it isn't a payoff. Uh, yeah, I almost feel like if it was some character we already had established, it's kind of like the same issue that the Dragon Ball series has as they develop these MacGuffins. It's just like, oh no, we have this insurmountable task. I'm just like, well, we could just use this MacGuffin and it'll fix it. Uh, like the hyperbolic time, ch- time chambers. Like, oh no, we're not we're not strong enough. If only there was a way we could get stronger in a small amount of time. Hey, we have this room where you could do just that. Um, and the same thing with the sumo guy. I feel like if it was a character we already had, it would be something that the heroes would just have relied on so many times already at this point where they're like, we need to go get stronger. Hey, guy that can uh, adjust time around us. Uh, let's no, let's, no, I mean, let's I, train I mean, with like, this guy. No, no, I mean like a guy that we had already met in the colonies. Like, well, that um, wouldn't work, though, because they wouldn't be able to cross over. Well, that, uh, yeah, so that that's the thing. Like, my, my whole thinking is we've seen a bunch of characters already who have haven't had a purpose but if it was written where we met a character in this exact colony and now they're being used like that would just work so much more just like just the way it's written that it's been in different colonies no but that's that's what happened though we met a guy in this colony who then was used for this purpose like given the structure of the arc like (laughs) given the structure of the arc there wouldn't have been an, an opportunity to introduce them earlier than this fight so either way they would have if they were in this colony, they would have shown up in this fight. So yeah, I, I mean, I, like I just feel like because there's been so many fights already. Like I think there's been like seven or something. Like at least one of those, but not in this colony though, because each fight is in like a different colony. So right, which is a which is, I guess is a writing problem, like having those different colonies. Because if there wasn't that, then we would have been able to have it. Well, I actually yeah. uh, great segue I, into current events of the chapter because I our last couple chapters because. I think that all of that is coming to a head in they uh, they establish that suddenly so many more people are joining in, uh, at least in their territory. Um, so I, I think that there's a reason that Gege like established these rules for for a payoff. Um, but I can, yeah. I can agree with Steven there uh, with the idea that, you know, we almost we want it to be written well enough where it's enjoyable on its own. Yeah. Not, not that it has to, you know, pay off later. Like it, it has, well, it has to be like, well, and this is just my personal so, opinion. And I don't know, Ben, you've been enjoying uh, all the fights yeah. a little bit more than I have. I mean, I think that a big part of why people aren't enjoying the calling game is because they're expecting the payoff right now, as opposed to just enjoying it for what it is, which is fights that don't have a payoff right now. But, like, there's still fun fights. It's just, you know, we have to read them week to week, and we're not getting the exciting stuff week to week because they're also set up, you know. Um, yeah, I think expectations my... expectations just might be a little too high on my part for that, but I almost want these fights, like, even if it's not, you know, going to be a big payoff immediately, I want it to at least move the overall story along a little bit Uh and it, it just feels like a lot of these fights have just been just been happening. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, it, with hindsight, did, did the cockroach demon have to be part of it? Like that kind of thing, like where you could remove one of these 20 new characters that were introduced in this calling game. Uh, do we really need all of them? Um, the, well, that's the, the irony, demon. too, is that the cockroach could have been so much cooler because he was basically a perfect matchup for Yuda because they both had these specialized swords that have this dichotomy between life and death. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it, we didn't get that payoff. Uh, I mean, the cockroach yeah. demon served its purpose in that fight. Like, I think the cockroach demon made that fight a lot better. 
And the car crash even doesn't necessarily have to tie into the overarching narrative as long mm. as it ties in. Like, this is what, you know, you, like, the car crash even made that fight enjoyable so that it could stand on its own in a broader picture, right? Yeah, I love like, that. These fights, yeah, exactly. I love that sword. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like sort of, you know, a damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you, if you put elements into just making the fights themselves better, then people complain that it doesn't tie into the overall narrative. But if you focus too much on the overall narrative, then people complain that the fights don't stand on their own. So, like, mm. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like a, a lot of the criticism of the Cullen game has just been sort of like because it's week to week and because it's the series isn't done yet. I think it'll be a lot better on a reread because yeah. I mean, maybe it's just because I enjoy the the um, fights that have been happening, uh, but I think that it's been fine. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that you've been enjoying them, man. Uh, I. I... I last couple chapters I've really enjoyed. Um, I I did enjoy the Maki stuff a lot. Um, and yeah, as I said yeah. earlier, I'm just excited for to see where this has all been heading because uh, all of these things needed to happen for whatever Gege has planned for the last chunk of this culling game. Um, and I think especially these last two chapters uh, that mm-hmm. see um, our main villain uh, talking to the president of the United States. Um, which, yeah, yeah we're, we're in the American colonies now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, possibly more dangerous. Um, and it, it was, it was uh, of course, they, I, I don't know, I, I've read a few mangas and they always seem to have an idea of, <laughs> I don't want to say stereotype or something like that, but they always just seem to write like our American uh governments and whoever presidents they draw and stuff like that they just always seem to be the same type of like character um and especially the military guy was just like oh no we're the greatest and we even get like a really well shaded uh arm with a veiny fist and uh (laughs) all this stuff is just like we need to show them force and of course we know that they're not going to I mean, it would have been a pretty wild uh, plot twist if they successfully took down Ghetto uh, at the White House. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Ghetto's like convincing the world leaders to uh, hunt our good guys, um, which honestly yeah, and, makes sense. Well, like the last we learned about Ghetto and stuff like that is he's wormed his way into becoming like one of the top leaders of the families in Japan and him just being able to uh travel all the way to the other side of the world and get an audience with the president uh uh this is it's it's setting up a lot of uh high stakes world tension drama and i really don't see how the series is going to get bigger than that so i i I almost think we're getting into final arc stuff soon i'm i'm also i'm just really excited by this just because it reminded me reminds me so much of fire force um which I think is a horribly underrated series because it's basically um, this latest plot twist of using the cursed energy from Jujutsu Sorcerers as actual energy is exactly what they do in Fire Force with people who can do the Adola burst. Mm. Um, like there was the whole thing of is Amaratsu actually powered by a human person? Is that and that question is is brought to a whole different perspective when someone with an Adola burst actually turns themselves willingly into a version of Amaretsu to power this area that they really care about. Um, so no, I'm I'm just really glad because it, it gave me an excuse to write about Fire Force again um, <laughs> with this. So I I just love the co- the call out. Um, is that the Fire Force. is that a Fujimoto? Is that the? No, 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 no I think a fire punch. That, that's the guy who did. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, soul to, oh, to okay. be fair, in Fire Punch, they also have the plot line of using people with superpowers for energy. Um, oh, that's right. It, it's just a lot darker. Uh, <laughs> oh, classic Fujimoto. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I I kind of like that they they wrote the president to be a little apprehensive about all of it. And it seems to be his 
right hand and his military guy just like no we should totally kidnap japanese people <laughs> and start <laughs> experimenting on them and the president is even like hold on a second guys let's let's how about how about we figure something else out <laughs> <laughs> um but it, i i mean yeah i i just want to say gary k johnson is the best character in manga in my opinion is that the name uh, of the president of this no, it's not the president. It's the the general with the eye patch. The military man. The, oh yeah, Gary. Uh, okay, he Gary. Should, he should be president. Yeah, <laughs> he, he should be. I mean, he's. Have you seen his eye patch and mustache? Like it is. It he, is a combo. Yeah, Strong and you combo. know he he just uh, he speaks the truth the whole time. You know he's like, uh, you know, <laughs> oh you. You Japanese people are sissies because your mommy didn't give you a gun when you were a child. Uh, and, you know, where's the I, lie? Where's the yeah, lie? Yeah, where's the lie, Jack? Uh, <laughs> oh my! I'm actually enjoying. I'm going back and looking at some of the panels, and Gege like forgot to draw the eye patch in some of them, and it's it's, it's freak. Well, he doesn't always have the eye patch, of course. You know, maybe he's that's, a secret. That's their larger show. Maybe he's a secret. Maybe he's a sorcerer. Maybe. Maybe it's his body double, you know. Yeah, who He's knows? Clones. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, last we kind of left it. Uh, well, actually, we'll, we'll cover more of the uh, Yuji uh, situation. So they finally found the angel, oh, yeah. and the angel said, uh, oh, you guys want me to, like, free somebody and disable a spell? I could totally do that, but you have to kill somebody for me. And it's revealed that yeah, it's, it's Sukuna. It's Sukuna. Uh, which honestly works all around. Um, I kind of feel like we don't know enough about this angel character yet. I mean, excuse me, I'm burping. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so we don't know a whole lot about this angel character yet, um, but they did heal Megumi. Um, so we know that they're not like totally, you know, unreliable or that type of thing, but it is kind of weird how they just like are suddenly part of the crew. Um, and uh, they have their own, like, Sukuna situation, it feels like. If I, uh, You guys can correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. But they no, have... I, I think you're right, um, because they've got the same sort of mouth appearing on their body. So, Yeah, and I love that they seem to have a better relationship than Sukuna and Yuji already, because uh, the mouth was just, like, spouting all their business, and even the angel character is just like, hey, hey okay, you're don't need to tell them everything like they're they're at least like have some sort of banter back and forth but um i mean it's been established that this angel character can possibly like separate or dispel cursed stuff so i almost wonder like if they straight up said oh uh well yuji's being possessed by him right now like if the angel would be able to cut that out or like uh cut that out or um somehow to stop the possession um or something like that but uh it, it's just a really interesting like tension that's built now like at any point uh, i feel like sukuna could kill the angel character and then that would ruin our gojo chances um but especially if the angel tried to kill sukuna and sukuna knows about it he could turn on her at any point um so i almost feel like it's like a ticking time bomb uh for that sort of thing uh, but it almost just seems like too convenient for this angel to be able to get ghetto out. I kind of, I kind of feel like it might be a, a red herring. I, I am. It, well, we're gonna have this tension I, that they need to stay alive now. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's that convenient because the angel was the reason they entered the Cullen game, right? They heard about yeah. the angel yeah, being able to do there. this sort that's of thing, of mm -hmm. and then they went into the Cullen game to track them down. So it's not like just out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, it was one of the so, things that Kenjaku brought. Uh, no, uh, Tengen brought up. Yeah, yeah. Oh so, yeah, I, I don't. I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I know that they're very important and stuff. It just uh, we've spent so much time with like UG and Megami that uh, just they're all like in a group now together as uh, friends, going towards uh, hundreds of possible combatants. People just flooding in. Uh, to their domain uh, from their little floaty culling game monsters that help them keep score and let them know uh, all these things. Uh, it, it'll be very interesting to see what they're rushing into right now. Um, but 
uh, yeah, the the whole like dynamic. Uh, I'm anxious to see how this dynamic will unfold because there's a few extra ticking time bombs that have been set here now with uh, the angel not wanting to do what we need them to do until Sukuna is dead. And Sukuna mm. being dead is kind of like, you know, end game sort of stuff. Possibly one of the most difficult tasks in the entire series right now up there with defeating Ghetto. Um, well, and also just brings up the whole thing about how the Jujutsu world wanted to kill Yuji initially. Mm-hmm. It's kind of bringing that whole dynamic back because, you know, if Sukuna's dead, then so is Yuji type of thing. So it's, um, yeah, I, I just like they're bringing that whole dynamic back just because it has been on the back burner um, for a while for obvious reasons. But it, it is refreshing to see that again. Yeah, it's just a return to like the progress that we talked about at the beginning of the Culling Games. It's like, okay, well, we need to we need to find this angel character so then we can do what we need to do. And it's yeah. it feels like it's been a whole year uh, since that was established, and now that's moving along. So it that that is kind of what I was getting to earlier, just about these battles, and I'm sure that. It'll make sense more uh, in hindsight, but it's just it's nice to get to that established goal because um, we've had little goals between here and there, like oh we need to get enough points to make a special rule and this kind of thing. But I just felt like those were very <clears throat> short term goals, and I was you know anxious for progress towards this longer term term goal. So okay. excited for JJK again. Um, I don't know if we'll be doing podcasts every week for it. We'll see, uh, but uh, yeah, I was very 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 excited to get back to UG and co. Uh, I hope we stay with them. Uh, but what do you guys, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, I just have to say like, I've been waiting for this, you know, ever since, and it's been so long since, cause angel showed up right after Reggie star died and Megumi was all messed up from that flight. And then we just see angel coming from the heavens rather aptly. <laughs> And then ever since then, it's just been chapter after chapter after chapter of, of something other than that. So like you're saying, yeah, perfect, um, perfect way to, you know, come back into the story. So yeah, like I was, like you were saying too, I'm excited for JJK again. So that's always good. Absolutely. Um, so what, uh, what are you guys hoping happens next? Um, I, I'm kind of hoping that we stick with uh, UG and Angel and Megami. Uh, to see what this, you know, number of threats uh, that appeared are going to be. Um, also really curious, like, if Sukuna is going to have anything to say or do about this angel character, um, you know, needing them dead. Uh, we also have, um, oh man, what's the name of the lightning uh, person that fought and almost killed Panda oh, yeah. and Hikari? Mm. Um, Kishimoto? Uh, no. It, K- Kishimo, <laughs> Kishimo. There we go. Kashimo. Kashimo, there we go. <laughs> um, I mean, we still no, have that. Email or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it just we've gotten to the point now where I'm hoping that we're done jumping around from colony to colony, introducing new characters and fights. Um, I'm anxious for everything that we've learned and all the characters that we've met uh, to you know, come together to, uh, to, to move the series along. And I, I feel like we're in the right steps on that. Um, I forget it has been established. Like, uh, say if we go back to, um, uh, Yuta, uh, if he's like beaten all the sorcerers in that bubble, does that bubble dispel and then he can go to another bubble? I don't think that's how it works. Okay. Um, but I mean, they can make a rule saying something like that. I guess. I think they're. I think they're edging to, um, because, remember, uh, they were. One of them was asked, like, "Oh, why don't you make a rule just saying, you know, you can go from colony to colony?" Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Well, we don't need to do that because we've got Maki, and Maki can go through colony to colony." So, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they keep that where it's like. Maki to the only one going back and forth, or because they now have so many points, because they've got Angel's points, they've got, you know, they've got a ton of points that they can put into rules 
it'll be interesting to see if they actually use those points to make that rule that they can move from colony to colony again yeah and i i wonder if there's like a limit to what the rule can be like you're no longer allowed to kill anybody like how Mm -hmm. how that would change things but the whole idea that maki can go in and out of uh the circles means that she can appear pretty much at any point, uh, especially with her new abilities and her being as ridiculously powerful and fast as she is. Uh, it's it's pretty exciting. Uh, she just shows up at the White House next chapter. She's just like, I, I've i traveled half the world in like an hour. And, in, and back in time, probably, because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's implied to be like a flashback. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're oh. right. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe all these extra combatants that are showing up are military. U.S. That's military. what I assume, honestly. Because uh, why else would Gage be putting this flashback at this point? Uh, yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, then that's going to get a lot more complicated for our heroes because it's like, okay, well, we don't want to just slaughter all of these like quote unquote innocent military types. Um, no, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're invading. They're invading Japanese soil to abduct Japanese citizens. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, they're the ones committing the war crimes here. All right. I guess it'll kind of depend how care. How I, I doubt we'll like spend time with the U.S. military, get to know each one of the characters of that, and uh, some of them are like, you know what, we're doing the wrong thing. We're we're gonna help the good guys here or are we the baddies are we, are we the bad guys <laughs> i i just want uh gary k johnson to develop a domain expansion i know it won't happen but i can dream you really like that guy yeah i i mean he's iconic just uh one chapter i've fallen in love you know i'm gonna get you a poster of gary k johnson please do <laughs> I, I want to marry Christmas. A vanilla name too. I just love it. Yeah. I know that's what makes it so it's great. It's like <laughs> Joe America Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I love it so. Much. <laughs> and uh, what does the K stand for? I mean, we gotta know. Killer. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Uh, I but I agree. I, I hope that's the not the last of Gary K. Johnson we get to see. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, the whole idea that they're suddenly that's how Ghetto decides to like convince them to start doing all these horrific things is like, well, uh, we might be able to figure out cursed energy to turn into like real energy, and you guys like energy, right? <laughs> like, um. But also just getting to see a little bit more of, like, Ghetto, like, he summoned some gigantic, terrifying elephant thing uh, that just seems to be able to mess with the gravity, and he just, like, just decimated uh, a bunch of the best, like, Secret Service members and uh, expert military and stuff like that. Uh, It was really no surprise, I mean... I would have been really surprised if they managed to like even hurt ghetto like a bullet or something like that. Um, because now I think about it, you know, we haven't had Japan's not really big on guns. So we haven't seen a jiu jitsu sorcerer. Um, well, no, that's not true. Actually, uh, Maki's younger sister, uh, her whole thing was like being able to create an extra bullet in her revolver and stuff like that. So, mm. um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm curious to see, how uh i think it it's a great uh great point ben i think yeah it's gonna be military showing up on ug and megami and stuff like that um so yeah it's it's getting pretty exciting um but what are some other things that you guys are like really hoping might happen next um well something that we haven't talked about i mean i'm just always interested just to get back to master tengen oh i thought you were gonna Uh, say toga just because Oh yeah, let's get back to Toga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah uh, Horikoshi can't fit it into his own manga, so he's like, hey, hey, can you can you just fill this in for me?" Well, yeah, you have an, I know you have an art going on where you're like going around and doing different fights. Could you just jump over to a new fight and finish one of mine for me? That'd be that'd be great. <laughs> Uh, we're talking oh, My Hero God. Academia. If you're into My Hero Academia, that's actually another podcast we do. Uh, so check out Mega Maga Monday's uh, My Hero uh, podcast. But sorry to interject I mean, with the humor. <laughs> seeing no, that no, I'm, I'm completely fine with. 
I, I'm completely fine talking about uh, Himiko anytime, even now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like I was saying, uh, yeah, I, I, one of the things I'm interested in seeing is Master Tengen at some point, just because they are just so mysterious and shrouded and possible villainy um, thanks to Megumi making me doubt Master Tengen. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I would just love to see more of them just because everything we know is just based on what Master Tengen said. And can we really trust Master Tengen? Like, k- kind of too, like even though Kenjaku is a bad guy, it's kind of like, oh, using, you know, even, even though it's like a really bad thing, it's like, oh, we want to make cleaner energy. Well, that's kind of nice. Um, <laughs> even though that the, the ends don't really justify the means, I guess. But it'd just be just to see, like, just Kenjaku's relationship with Master Tengen, um, you know, coming out more. That would be great. But well, that's it's, for the future. Yeah, it's just the whole, like, we could politely ask Jujutsu Sorcerers to, like, help us figure out our energy crisis. Nah, hmm. let's just go kidnap a whole bunch of them and experiment on them. It's just like, whoa, all right, you guys are kind of jumping from three to ten immediately. <laughs> Uh, but I personally am hoping we stay uh, with Yuji and Megami. Uh, it just feels like so long since we've yeah. had them together. Um, and mm. uh, they just, you know, they, they move the plot along. <laughs> and that's that's what I'm most excited about. Because I like JJK's plot. Um, and the longer we, like, strayed away from that, the more I was ready to get back to it. Um, so... Um, I am excited to hear about Tengen's stuff and get more time with that mysterious character. Um, also, the like uh, the uh, tall female that Toto like, uh, I think his his mentor. We haven't really had it cleared up very much, um, but she showed up at the end of Shibuya and uh, made it seem like she was going to be a, a major force to be reckoned with. Um, but she's, at last I know, I think she was like helping guard Tengen. So we have a lot of mysterious characters that I would like to get back to with Tengen, but I'm, I'm willing to wait a little bit longer. I, I want to stick with Yuji and them for now. Uh, but how about you, Ben? I mean, I'm, I'm just willing to go where Gege takes me. Like I've been <laughs> enjoying all the twists and turns of the calling game. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure I'll enjoy what's coming next too, or hopefully I will at least. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Anything else about JJK, guys? Before we move into plugs and recommendations. I think no, I'm, I'm good. I'm just glad to be talking about it again. <laughs> well, good man. I'm I'm glad I can make you happy. <laughs> mm. Um. Well, yeah, uh, it's been fun uh, talking, uh, especially we had a good amount to talk about. Um, we'll, we'll see how often we'll be doing JJT, JJK talks. I think we'll kind of go chapter by chapter excuse me, and uh, see what, uh, what, what, what there is to talk about. But please let us know in the comments uh, or follow us on Twitter um, and let us know what your thoughts are on JJK. And if you would like to hear us talk about it more, um, we would love to hear from you. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll move into full plugs and recommendations. This has been Mega Manga Monday. Uh, You can follow us on Twitter for updates at MMangaMondays. Uh, You can also reach out to us on there. We got our DMs open, so go ahead and slide into those. And uh, we also have a website, uh, Mega Manga Mondays, all one word, dot podbean.com. It's a pretty stylish website. I I, I like the way it looks. Um, But uh, yeah, uh, I'm I, Jason Hahn. I'm a writer for Screen Rant. Uh, I'd love it if you checked out my stuff there. Uh, I write a lot of video game related stuff. Uh, recently did a review for uh, the new Ghostbusters game, which was fantastic and fun and very well written. Uh, and a lot of fun multiplayer wise. If you've got some friends who like playing uh, multiplayer games together, uh, especially the asymmetric kind of things, how it plays is like four Ghostbusters and then one person plays as the ghost um while they're being hunted and stuff it's really cool it's fun um i also have a youtube channel called hanzi and friends Uh, i like to stream on wednesdays and sundays Uh, i've been streaming some overwatch 2 lately uh we'll probably start getting into a scary game next week uh might be playing bioshock for the first time oh i'm bioshock i know that one yeah i love bioshock i've i've 
I've played it a good amount, but the wife has never heard of it. So I think I might have, uh, I think I might have wife on the stream and uh, play through it uh, with her watching and see how she reacts to it for the first time. So it should be a good amount yeah, of fun. It's pretty creepy. Very, pretty very. Creepy. Uh, it's it's. I, I could go. I could do a whole podcast on Bioshock. <laughs> a big fan. Um, but uh, Stephen, any uh, plugs or recommendations, man? Um, well, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll just say that. Um, I'm excited to do that. I'm getting more involved in the, the category, the screen rank category for interviews, doing a lot more of those, not just, um, you know, speaking to anime professionals, but, um, doing a lot of documentaries type of interviews with, uh, um, with directors and producers and things like that, just cause I, I really respect, um, directors, uh, of documentaries, just almost, almost more than, than actual movies, um, so it's just been really great, especially, you know, just talk to the director for the upcoming uh, true crime, the fire that took her, um, just because it, it's just, you know, she's really trying to push these really important injustices that need to be righted. And it, it's just great talking to someone like that who's, you know, uh, you know, using all that she can to, you know, get the story across. Yeah. Um, Actively so it's trying really to make the world a better place. Yeah, yeah, and even too, like I did a documentary uh, it's about um, Barney the Dinosaur, actually, I love you, you hate me type of thing. Mm. Um, but it, it's just the whole thing is, and it kind of spoke to me just because I'm this kind of person sometimes, but where it's like, you don't, why be the person whose entire identity is about hating something when you can be the person whose identity is loving something? So. It's really getting that message across. Um, it's just really uplifting things, and I'm I'm glad to uh, um, be a part of that or trying to get that message across as well. Um, well, yeah. Is there a particular screen rant that you recently wrote that you'd like to uh, throw people's attention to? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's that one that I love you, you hate me um, documentary where I spoke to to the director. Um, we just got in a really in depth conversation of just about online. Um, just the way people act online, all that vitriol and how it could be better. Um, it, it, it's just a really great thing. And, and I just started, it, it's not out yet. I'm still writing it. Um, but for that documentary, The Fire That Took Her, that's going to be out in theaters soon. Um, but that's not up yet. But just, just really great people who are trying to um, make the world a better place um, by telling these stories. So. Um, but other than that, um, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of fun anime, loving the Chainsaw Man anime, mm -hmm. um, even though it, it, I, I'm actually, I, I wrote an article about it too, because it's interesting. They already skipped a major battle um, from chapter two of Chainsaw Man in episode two of the Chainsaw Man anime. Um, so look out for that one. But, yeah. <laughs> Well, hell yeah, man! Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. I'll I'll be putting uh, check uh, check out Stephen's Screen Rant articles. I'll have a link in the description to his profile on there, so you can check out everything he's uh, been writing. Uh, but, but how about you, Ben? Yeah, I've also been watching a fair amount of anime. The Chainsaw Man anime. I'll second that recommendation. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Even though it did skip that fight, I think pacing wise it made sense. Even though it's kind yeah. of disappointing. Yeah. Uh, uh, but for a lesser-known anime that is is pretty crazy, uh, Akiba Made War is very interesting. Uh, I don't know that one. It's, it's a very wild ride. It's an anime original, uh, so you don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> and it's it's pretty fun. It's been pretty fun so far. Uh, a lot <laughs> of people say to go into it blind, so I'm not going to say anything more, but uh, it, it's a wild ride. Uh and in terms of plugs, I have a YouTube channel of my own called YGO from Zero, where I go over historical formats of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, definitely check it out. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, as I said, I'll have uh, our links and recommendations in the description. So definitely check those out. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it, it's, well, A, it's been a lot of fun talking JJK with you guys. Uh, thanks for your time um we'll uh we'll we'll be talking jjk again uh we'll just see how soon it will be um 
But uh, yeah, uh, as I said, subscribe to the Twitter for updates, and you can hear when we're going to be doing a new JJK talk. Um, but yeah, we, we got a whole lot of manga coming out this week. We're going to be talking One Piece, uh, Dragon Ball Super, and Boruto's coming back. Uh, new arc for Dragon Ball Super is going to be starting, I just realized. So that, that's kind of exciting. Uh, uh, I think it's on, it's on hiatus for a bit, though. I think it was just on a one month hiatus. I, I think. Oh, we, really? Yeah, I think that we have a new chapter coming out uh, this week. Hopefully, hopefully. Oh crap! Let me check that out. Actually, while you're talking, because <laughs> there's usually there's a ticker on the Shonen Jump um, stuff. Like the next right, right, issue right. comes out, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, you should. Um, but yeah, uh, as I've said, we talk about all kinds of different series on Mega Manga Monday. Uh, we're also doing one on the new chapters of Chainsaw Man, uh, which has been a lot of fun to talk about. Uh, we're going to have a new new episode of that coming out very soon. Uh, One Piece is very, very good right now. Uh, we also talk My Hero Academia. Um, and uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Super, Burrito, and a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, yeah, I look forward to those. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the next one. And thanks for your time today, guys. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Peace. Yeah, see y'all next time.